Hey folks, this is Steel Cowboy here, and uh, welcome to my very first pipe YouTube video. And um, you know, I've been a pipe smoker for a long time, and um, been really enamored by what's been happening with social media and the impact it's having on our on our community in, in uh, mostly really good ways. And um, thought I'd give it a go and talk a little bit about some of the topics that interest me. Um, I am not an expert. I'm not even a great amateur uh, expert. So, um, you know, they're just kind of views from the couch. And, um, and so, you know, this first video, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, what I'd like to do moving forward and, um, and you know, kind of some of the things that I like to talk about, and who I am, and and uh, what I like to do, and um, I, I I broke out this uh, old Savinelli. It was in a box in my closet for a number of years, um, and uh, I haven't smoked it for a long time. But it was my very first pipe. It was the pipe that uh, that I spent, you know, real money on. It was more than you know. Real money at the time it was probably thirty bucks or something like that, uh, brand new. And uh, I remember saying to my wife, "I can't believe people spend this kind of money on a pipe." Uh, you know, and I promise you, I'll never, I'll never spend more than fifty, fifty dollars maximum. Um, but over time, you know, I went from a cigar smoker, uh, a, a, you know, regular cigar smoker, uh, to a pipe smoker, and. Um, fiddled with the pipe for probably 20 or so years and uh, and then one day you know it just kind of clicked and so um, I'll tell you a quick story about that real quickly I um, I was on a motorcycle ride I, I'm in Austin Texas right by the way right now and uh, I was on a motorcycle ride up on the main coast and uh, and uh, for whatever reason really um, no real thought behind it. I was having one of my flirtation days with with pipes and I stopped into uh, you know, one of these kind of rustic uh, convenience stores they have up in Maine and um, bought a yellow bowl because um, it was the, it was the they didn't have any cobs and uh, which are still among my favorite pipes and uh, uh, so I, I, I picked up this uh, this yellow bowl for I think it was around eight dollars or something like that, and a, and a pouch of Middleton's uh, apple tobacco I think it was. And uh, so anyway, we get up to to the coastline and uh, we find this great big lighthouse, um, uh, like there's so many of them up in Maine. And uh, this one was kind of out of the way, and I'm sitting there with with my bride and and. Uh, we're watching the moon over the ocean. It was it was one of those nights where it wasn't quite dark yet, but you could see the moon. The stars were just starting to come out, and I I, I fired up this this uh, this yellow ball, and uh, and sure enough, um, something clicked. And I went, "Wow, this I, I, I get it." You know, it was one of those. Had, you know, one of those moments of awareness that just I had an epiphany. I went, oh, I want to know more about this. And you know, it's an interesting time to be a pipe smoker. And I think that um, you know, one of the things that helped me be successful in, in becoming uh, an educated pipe smoker, semi-educated pipe smoker, is the availability of materials. You know, our hobby was you know, booming when I was a kid and, and it just has been downhill for many, many years and, and now there's been this kind of resurgence and a lot of it's been because of the internet. Probably 90% of it has been because of the internet and um, and so I started reading and um, you know, a lot of pipe information on the internet was still at the newer stages. Um, but there was still enough out there that got me interested in learning about blends and learning about who pipe makers were and what the difference was between a high grade pipe and, and, and a factory made pipe. And, uh, um, and, and before you knew it, you know, I started to, to get it. And I went through, you know, burning my mouth and not being able to keep a pipe lit like I, I'm not right now because I'm constantly talking. And, um, 
So anyway, I'm back up on, on the main coast here and uh, have this epiphany. And jump forward a few years later, and Rich, a great guy over at Fort Noggins, uh, you may know him, um, uh, he's got his mail order business out of Vermont, um, sends me a, an English blend to test out that he's thinking about bringing to market. And uh, he says, uh, you know, just give me a give me a shout after you smoke a few bowls of it. Let me know what you think. So um, I liked it. It was it was a medium English. It uh, had some sweetness to it, um, and uh, definitely an English that, um, that that appealed to me at that time, and, and and still does. Actually, my wife my wife really enjoys it uh, now. And uh, so I said, well, what's the, what's the name of this blend? What are you going to call it? Uh, and he said, well, I'm going to call it Owl's Head. And I said, well, that's, a, that's an interesting name. I said, where would you get that name from? He said, well, there's this little uh, lighthouse on the coast of Maine. And, <laughs> and, you, and you wouldn't know where it is unless you, you know, somebody kind of showed you. It's not, not a popular tourist destination. And I was, I was knocked out. I said, Owl's Head? Lighthouse Coast of Maine. I said that's where I really discovered pipes for real after years of flirt, you know, kind of flirting with them. And uh, so, anyway, a little side story. But uh, one of the things that I'd like to do uh, is I'd like to talk about, you know, things um, kind of centered around tobaccos, uh, the like the tobaccos that I like to smoke. Um, I typically am a 10 to 12 bowl a day guy. I have a pipe in my mouth most of the day. And um, smoke about 40% English blends, about 40% Virginias, uh, and about 20% uh, Lakeland blends, you know, gay with Hogar stuff, some, some Sam gay with stuff as well. And um, in, I've got about oh, 190 or so pipes some real high grade pipes and some very, very inexpensive pipes. Uh, and in and, and, and most days you'll find both in my mouth. You know, uh, I smoke a lot of corn cobs and I smoke some, some high end stuff. So we'll talk about pipes a little bit. Probably won't be doing uh, yabos and things like that. It's just, uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, I enjoy watching them, uh, but it's just, just not my thing. Anyway, um, um, I like to smoke a different blend uh, pretty much with every pipe. Um, the only blend that I smoke religiously 365 days a year is early morning pipe. It was my first real love. Uh, and to this day, I, st I still smoke that. Um, I'm also really into, into cellaring blends. And so um, I've been blessed with a, a pretty substantial tobacco cellar and... Uh, like to, to talk about them, review them, and again, I am far from an expert on, it, on any of this stuff. And the only thing I'm an expert on is the stuff that I like. Um, but I, I do post on, on tobacco reviews under the name Steel Cowboy. And, um, and the name comes from the fact that I'm uh, both my wife and I, uh, who I should mention is, is a pipe smoker as well. Um, uh, we're both long distance motorcycle people, and so when we're uh, you know, afforded the time, we're, we're generally out somewhere across the United States or Canada, and uh, we've covered all 50 states and uh, all of Canada except for Newfoundland and as far north as the Arctic Circle. So uh, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the neat people I've met, you know, in the pipe world and uh, traveling to pipe shows on a motorcycle. Um, and getting back to pipes, a little bit about, you know, what makes a good pipe. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, an expensive pipe, but what makes a good pipe versus a pipe that's not so good a pipe? And what makes a person dedicated to this hobby um, as a hobbyist, not just as part of a fad? And, um, and so, you know, those kinds of topics I think, I, you know, I'm going to really touch on a lot. And, I'm hoping that more than five people will watch this and at some point I'll hear back. And uh, uh, I'm not a tech guy. Um, my knowledge pretty much stops at Donkey Kong. So um, I'll do the best I can to get 
you know the information out in a, in a timely fashion um, and and so anyway right now uh, like I said I'm smoking this 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 pipe I haven't smoked for many years but I thought for the first video um, I would go back and, and you know kind of where it all started where you know I bought that first pipe um, and uh, I'm actually smoking right now some GQ um, uh, classic English and if you're lucky enough to live in the EU you'll have or if you have a friend in the EU I strongly recommend trying some of Glenn Quelch's stuff it's uh, it's phenomenal uh, word of caution to to my fellow American friends um, if you don't have a friend in the EU uh, they're tough to get uh, credit card companies make it very tough for, for Glenn to, to ship stuff to the United States and he, he won't um, right, it's just what I happen to be smoking at this moment so I thought I'd I mention it. Um, I'm I'm a uh, I'm a dedicated diet lemonade uh, uh, drinker as well when I'm smoking a pipe, and there's two reasons for that. Uh, one of them is is that uh, I find that the, the sweetness in the lemonade brings out the sweetness in the Virginia when I'm smoking, and uh, it was just something that I kind of stumbled on. The second reason is is that um, as I've gotten older, I'm, I've become a diabetic, and so I can't enjoy you know, small batch bourbon and things like that that I used to really, really love when I was smoking a pipe. So that's kind of my drink of choice. And um, so you usually find me wandering around somewhere, uh, even when I'm out on the bike. There'll usually be a little cooler, and there's some diet lemonade along with my along with my pipes. Anyway. Um, I'm looking forward to, to doing some more stuff. I want to talk about, like I said, about celery, about aging tobaccos, about different blends. Um, I've smoked somewhere between 800 and 1,000 blends. And, um, you know, funny thing about tobacco is that there really isn't, from my perspective, bad blends. And, uh, you know, I've, I've probably thrown up somewhere around 600 reviews, and there's maybe less than 25 that I, I just say, no, nope, don't, don't, don't touch that. And it's largely because tastes are so varied, and, and uh, there's usually some redeeming quality in just about every single blend. Uh, no, you may not feel the same way, but... Um, that's kind of the way that I, I, I look at tobaccos. And and uh, the other thing I want to talk about is aromatics. I like a, an occasional bowl of aromatic. I have a sweet tooth. And, you know, I go through phases maybe, um, maybe once a week. Um, but the thing is, is that where's that line? What's that mean? You know, aromatic. I mean, uh, everybody points to cherry or chocolate and says, "Oh yeah, that's a, that's an aromatic." But the line's actually not so clear, and, and so I'm hoping to t talk about that a little bit. Um, talk about collecting. Um, you know, and anything else that kind of passes my mind. Um, and I guess that's kind of what YouTube is for, right? So. Anyway, I hope, uh, I hope that you'll come back and uh, we'll get into some topic discussions and, you know, maybe it'll, it'll spark your interest. And uh, my wife, who, who's more of the shy sort, uh, is probably not going to pop on, but I might be able to coax her into it in a night or two. So anyway, until next time, great talking to you.